Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today we radiate holistic health with Dr. Carissa Stanton of Mindful Pediatrics, which is something I am just so excited about. Okay, full disclosure, I have to say Dr. Stanton is our pediatrician. (laughs) (laughs) And very lucky to be. And full disclosure, Christy Clemens helps my daughter and her spirit. So (laughs) we're kind of helping each other here with with our daughter. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. It takes a village, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, my gosh. So, Carissa, you and I met at the Good Living Expo. That's right, in February, yeah. And the universe brought us together, thankfully, because um, in so many ways this has been great. Um, collaborating with you and yeah. helping each other out as mama bears trying to <laughs> raise our kids. Take care of each other's daughters. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll take care of yours' body and you take care of mine spirit and we'll, we'll, we're oh, covered. Yeah, <laughs> we take care of each other's families. I love that. And so you just started this business, Mindful Pediatrics. Yeah. And that is exciting. You know, I've had, doc, I don't know if you know Dr. Diane Voss. Yep. Yep, reinvent your health. There's Dr. George and Nat. Well, no, she doesn't op- operate the same way, but like Dr. Diane Voss, you operate on subscription. Yeah, yeah. That's so really great. It's this whole different way of looking at caring for people. Um, you know, instead of just being a, a once a year kind of stop shop, it's a hey, I am there for you always. Like I am your partner mm-hmm. um, in raising your children. Um, you know how, I mean, you know, life's a journey, right. That brought me to this place, (laughs) but the most recent story that led me to where I am is, so I have a nutrition degree and I have training in functional and integrative medicine. Um, and I studied under Joy Weidert. Um, she did integrative medicine at KU and then retired. Um, and when she retired, she kind of left this void in the community for kids, you know, cause she was taking care of their holistic health. Um, and, um, I tried to fill that through the system like she did. Um, and, but it got increasingly hard. And I think that's one of the reasons she left medicine. Um, you know, in the system, you have so many constraints and so many things between you and your patients, you know, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, administrators, you know, um, that it just, it was so hard. All you had time for was to take care of the quick fixes, the body, Um, it just, I never felt like I was really helping anyone or usually utilizing my, my skills and my passions. Um, so then just one day I was like, look, I, I, I need to do this a different way or, or I'm going to end up like, like Dr. Weider and just leave medicine altogether. Um, which, you know, is, is sad that, that some healthcare providers are getting to that point. Um, so basically how mindful pediatrics came about is I just brainstormed, okay, what are the things holding me back from holistically taking care of children? Um, and I just took all of those away, um, you know, and, and the first being the insurance companies put so many pressures. Now you do take insurance. I mean, you can issue a super bill, correct? Correct. So I just, that's exactly right. So I don't deal with insurance companies. <laughs> the families are welcome to. And actually, insurance companies are a lot more. The families are the consumer, right? So they're much more likely to um, be congenial with them and help them out than me. I'm a cost to them. So, um, so That can help save costs for families who wanted to have a holistic pediatrician because you don't have to have a billing specialist. You don't have to have somebody to deal with insurance and you have, you know, that's a lot less overhead for you. Oh yeah. Just like a farmer who sells at a farmer's market directly to a consumer. When you sell directly to the consumer and you take out that middleman, there's so much of that overhead. When I compared budgets in network with insurance or out of network with Mm -hmm. insurance. So in network means you sign this 
silly contract saying, I'm going to take your low prices and, you know, I'm going to take all your restrictions and all your quality incentives and all those things. Um, I don't, didn't sign those contracts. So, you know, that's why it's up to the family. But, um, you know, when you sign those contracts, um, in that work, my budget would have been 10 times as, as much because of, like you said, the overhead. Um, and so um, instead of a normal pediatrician who's in network has to have 2,000 patients to cover all that overhead. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So in my practice, I only have to have 200. So I can truly do individualized, know my families. There's so many benefits to the model I've chosen. Again, out of network, um, I chose to not have a physical location for many reasons. Yes, yeah, which you is do a ch- home visit. I do. That's <laughs> it's amazing. So I do virtual care, which means the members get an app where they can text me, call me. Could you imagine being able to text your? I mean, you know, you to have yeah. text your pediatrician. Hey, yeah. this is going on. Not having to play doctor mom or figure out if they're sick enough to go to an urgent care. Yeah. It's so much better care. The kids just, and the moms and the families. Um, so that virtual care piece, um, and then the home visit piece where for checkups, instead of just, you know, seeing your doctor for 10 minutes, I come into your home for an hour. We get to really dig down deep and uh, making sure they're sleeping well and supplements. And again, doing that whole wellness approach. Um, making sure their wellness is optimized instead of just, oh, are you are you less sick? You know, right. And that was my goal, not just to make kids less sick, like I was doing in a clinic setting, right. but to make them more well and whole and just all around good. And and the kids are comfortable in their home. You should see them. Um, I can get so much more information. They get so much more out of it. They're relaxed. You know, everything is just. It's just better. It's this was the original way doctors practice, right? Exactly, making house calls. I mean, we did it for centuries. It's only in the last fifty years that, with the managed care system, they made it, you know, not feasible because you just didn't get reimbursed for doctors going into homes. That they stuck us all in a clinic, herding cattle all day, seeing twenty-five to thirty patients all day, yeah. Yeah, every ten minutes. You know, that's yeah. that's not that's not wellness. <laughs> not wellness. Aww. And so I would just like to compare and contrast here. So, you know, we've been going to a kind of a big pediatric collaborative, which was nice in a way, it took our insurance. And then if one, if her regular doctor couldn't see my daughter, then what somebody else in the practice could, so we could always get in, but we'd have maybe five minutes with the doctor. Mm-hmm. And then they said, okay, here's, here's a prescription. Right. So versus, you know, you yes. see my daughter, spend as much time with her as available. And then you say, here's a supplement that we can try. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I had horrible monthly cramps. Terrible. Mm. And, you know, they put me immediately on birth control when I was like 16. Oh, goodness. Right. And that was it helped the cramps, but it caused other harm and other problems. But, you know, I talked to you about, well, what can we do about my daughter's cramps? And it's like, well, here's a supplement that has got magnesium and all these things, apply heat, have an Epsom salt bath. Yeah. So to me, that's invaluable. I always try. And that's, again, another thing, you know, America's healthcare system misses. Um, they don't get to the root of the problem um, yeah. with these these quick fixes and quick, you know, everything's quick. And um, all you have time for, so when the body's sending me a signal like cramps or rash or constipation yeah. or something like that, I take that as that that person's body is sending me a signal they need help. Something is unbalanced, unwell, they need some help with supplements or diet or something, um, you know, tweaked um, either in their mind, body, spirit, or environment. Something needs to be tweaked um, and helped. Um, Instead of, you know, modern medicine sees a symptom as a, you know, a burden, like, oh, oh, gosh, this, you know, whatever is causing them to not you know, whatever. So let's just cover it up with 
let's just make them not feel it, you know, right. whereas I see it as actually a blessing, <laughs> like their bodies, you know, actually telling me there's something underneath that needs to be addressed. Um, and I love to try to figure out and, you know, there's so many benefits to my practice being smaller, more available. I'm paying access because, you know, a lot of times they give the medication so that way the clinic doesn't have to think about that child anymore. You know, oh, here's your medicine. Here's your antibiotics. So I don't have to worry about your ear anymore. Or here's your x-ray. So I don't have to worry about your, your ankle because they don't have time. They have thousands of patients, right? Absolutely. With me, if, if you have that app and text me, I love the, the flexibility I have to, well, let's just try this first. Text me tomorrow. Let me know how it's going, you know, or, you know, let's not go straight to an x-ray. Let's watch how she does. Or, you know, with the ear, let's not, let's try some garlic drops. Let's try supporting their body to heal themselves first. I love that. And I can do that because, you know, I don't have 2,000 patients that are, you know, I, I can do that individualized care um, and we can kind of push the envelope of natural approaches because I'm available. If something happens, if that kid starts running a really high fever or getting really ill, I can send a prescription, you know, but at least we tried the natural first. Right, because you are an MD. You can prescribe. Correct. You can recommend like physical therapy, these type of things. What if um, the kid needs blood work or other te- types of testing or lab? Yeah. So do? yeah, every situation and you're exactly right. Uh, something that's unique to me. And I feel like families in this community have either had to choose between modern medicine, <laughs> like mm-hmm. an MD, because most MDs are not trained in what I'm trained in. You know, I, none of this nutrition or functional medicine I learned in medical school, right? <laughs> <laughs> All I learned was disease medication, disease medication. Exactly. I learned in medical school only about the body. I didn't learn about the spirit and the functional and the everything else. Yeah. Exactly, the right. environment. Um, so I had to learn that all on my own. Um, you know, and luckily I have that nutrition degree. Um, but then on the flip side, families that kind of want more natural things have had to choose. And the natural paths in this community are wonderful. We do have yes. a great naturopathic community. Yes. And I'm starting to kind of know them and, and get a feel for what they specialize in. It's incredible. So I will say this community is very lucky and we have some great resources there. Right. Integrative um, too. But they yeah. all seem to be geared toward the adults. Yes, you're exactly right. And that's why, you know, it's a little unique that um, I have that pediatric residency training. Um, but yeah, so I, you're right. I can take both of those together. And that's what integrative medicine is, right? Natural and then modern. And, and you find the best way to, to match them up. So. So, so back to the lab results, you know, maybe we need oh, yeah. to get blood draws. <laughs> I know. Your original question, I got all philosophical and you want the logistics. So I have, um, there's a couple of labs, Great Plain labs, if they're functional labs that I need to do um, for stools, doctor's data. Um, if it's just, you know, straight workup, chemistry, you know, blood count, um, I have a um, an account at Quest. And Quest will actually are in network with most insurance companies. So, um, and I can code it to where usually that that's covered. So, um, anyway, so I, yeah, I have... My my goal was to function kind of like a, a pediatrician in a clinic, but but on the move. So I have all my doctor's bags with all my equipment. I have scales and instruments. Um, I even have stuff for procedures. So um, like minor procedures, you know, like tongue tie or derma bond or staples or so. Yeah, yeah you so can do all that stuff yeah, too. yeah. Um, I even have equipment for circumcision for those that you know, do a home birth and choose to have that, um, done. So, you know, I, my goal was to kind of be both worlds, the best of both worlds. I'm trying, you know, to have, um, my primary focus is primary care. Um, I, what I love doing is watching kids grow up and trying to make them well. Um, but within that, I'm a resource. If that kid runs into problems, I do have the functional medicine stuff to help them. So it's kind of, you know, I try to 
mesh it. Of both worlds. Yeah. And so, yeah, even on your card, um, it's holistic and wellness care, home visits for well and sick care. So, yeah, you do the well, well child. Um, at cost immunizations. That's kind of a hot button topic <laughs> these days. Yeah. I, Can we talk a little bit about of it? Of course. Yeah. Um, and so uh, a couple things. Um, one, I will say my practice is very friendly with all medical decisions. Um, and that's another reason I didn't have a physical location is because I wanted to be open to those families that chose not to vaccinate or delay or under or, you know, the whole spectrum. Um, so that way I didn't have in the waiting room, you know, a, a bunch of kids mixed together that have different choices. And um, and I didn't want to have to worry about that battle. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. E- either between the moms or me and the mom. You know, I just didn't, I wanted to take that out as a, I wanted I wanted to come into their home and follow their rules. <laughs> I hated that families had to come into my clinic and follow my rules. Right. You know, so um, I really wanted to, to leave it up to the families. Um, so that being said, I can provide so much more individualized care that the family and I can sit down and talk about what they're worried about. Because um, I am empathetic to families. American children are unwell. They are. Okay, so yeah. from your perspective, where, where do you see that? Yeah, so um, just the rate of chronic disease. I mean, from autism, ADHD, asthma, you know, mental, I mean, they're unwell. They're, their minds are overwhelmed. Um, you know, we're not taking care of their minds. We're not taking care of their bodies. We're doing these quick fix things. Um, we're not taking care of their environment. I mean, they're overloaded with toxins and, um, you know, we're obviously not taking care of their spirit, which you help with, you know, they are not listening to their spirit anymore or taking care of it. Um, so, and, you know, with this high rate of chronic disease, it's not genetic, right? I mean, there wasn't some crazy genetic shift. It has to be something with those other things, something with the environment or something we're doing to them that's causing these. Um, And I think the medical community has done a disservice to families who have seen there's something wrong. (laughs) Um, And we say, we haven't found the exact reason, but we're telling them, oh, it's not the vaccines. Like, right. you know, but we need to give them an alternate, you know, reason. Is it the pesticides? Is it the plastics? You know, the endocrine disruptors. Then what is it if it's not that? I think it's a combination of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think kids are so overloaded with all these things. They're not resilient. And they're not able to detoxify as well. Um and, and, you know, back to the original vaccines, sorry, I keep going on a tangent, but to the original question about vaccines, you know, I think it's kind of like food. There's no one food that's bad. Right. It's, right. it's that, you know, if you ate five pieces of cake at once, it, you, that's bad. You would not feel well. Right. right. So maybe it's not the individual vaccines. It's the fact that we give them so much and so early, you know, the yes. schedule maybe. Um, and the schedule is what's good for the masses, right, in the maybe system. 80%. Exactly. But then it's the 20% that have problems. Right, that can't detoxify or handle that insult to their body as well. Exactly. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm, again, I sit down with the family. We come up with their individualized plan based on what they want to do. You know, some of them really want to stay away from the ones that are con- contaminated with animal products or ones that are for religious reasons or ones that have, you know, toxic metals in them. So, right. um, yeah, so we figure out how, you know, what individualize it to their, I take family history in consideration. Absolutely. Do they have a strong history of autoimmune or, you know, certain things? So how does autoimmune affect vaccination schedule? Yeah. So, um, in lots of ways. So it's a risk factor. I mean, for lots of things. So, um, the way I look at autoimmune is it's a two hit thing. So obviously there's something in their genetics that makes them more prone to their immune system being unbalanced. Um, and then there's environmental hits that kind of send them over the board that makes their immune system not very regulated um, and starts attacking itself. Um, 
And for some people, that could be, you know, environmental things like toxins. It could be viruses. Um, and vaccines themselves, since they stimulate the immune system, sometimes that can, you know, so depending on the history, um, you know, I'll, I'll take it easy with some things with a family. And um, again, it's, you know, it's not a, I don't have a set way I do things. It's so individualized, which is different than than anyone is able to do. Absolutely. Well, I know yeah. for my daughter, um, I was more of the safe vaccines. Her dad, who's now an emergency room nurse, uh, said, well, we're going to vaccinate. So there's no right. question. And I said, okay, well, let's do it smart. Let's in order the MMR vaccines separately, administer them a couple of weeks apart, and make sure that everything goes okay. He was all right with that. So is that what you're talking about? Kind of a, um, I don't know, maybe more like yeah. slowing the a world. gentle, a gentle approach. Yeah. And and it, and I really focus on the individualized because it it really depends on the risk factors. You know, if a kid's, you know, if a kid's in daycare, you know, if for some reason they're not breastfed or they're traveling or you know something like that, then obviously, you know, and. Again, it's, it's I'm vaccine friendly. I mean, they do save lives, right? right? So, but we need to do it just like we do everything else. You know, just like with medication, do it very mindfully. <laughs> See, coming back to that whole name. Yeah, so, exactly. just being mindful about it, about how it's going to affect the body and does the benefit really outweigh the risk and you know, just being smart about it. Uh, I think that's a really common God. sense approach yeah. because they do, vaccines do save lives. There are, I mean, both can be true. There are some children who have been adversely affected by them, but vaccines do save lives for the majority of, of people. But I like this approach where, you know, just being mindful about it. Yeah. And um, I'm all for advocating for safer vaccines, ones yeah. that have been fully vetted, don't contain harmful things. You know, if you're going to inject it in my body, I want it to be safe, right? Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. that's that's a good model. And um, I, I just love the model of being able to go into someone's home. So like, and see how they live, see how... It makes such a big difference to mm -hmm. see, again, um, you know, I can look around and see, you know, what pets do they have? What cleaning supplies do they use? Um, a lot of the moms use me as kind of their clean living resource. Because <laughs> yeah. not that I'm an expert on it, but I, you know, I've I've done a lot of research about it um, to what to recommend to families. So, you know, I just had a mom yesterday text me, I'm at Target, what sunblock should I get? <laughs> you know? That's a so, good question. So little things like that really come into play that people don't think about that um, poor moms in this country have had to they have so much on their shoulders and dads and dads because there's a lot of dads too that are starting to wake up and realize, look, there's something, you know, parents have to think for themselves nowadays because there's not a lot they can rely on. You know, um, uh, I'm a little skeptical of some of the government agencies, you know, are, are they really recommending this because it's safe or is it because the company paid them off, you know? Yes. Point. So I, I I really love the Environmental Working Group. They're an independently funded group. I donate to them. I'm like, take my money because tell me what to use. Um, because, um, you know, a, a lot of those other agencies, I don't know if you can trust. So, you know, parents have had to try to be so much of an advocate for their children because I don't know what you can trust nowadays, you know. Um, and that's another reason I... I opened my practice the way I did so independently um, because I didn't I didn't want to have outside influences. I wanted when a family, when I gave them a recommendation, they knew that's what I thought was best for their child, not because I had had a pharmaceutical rep come by the day before. <laughs> give me lunch or not because I have an insurance company telling me, oh, you have a quality incentive to give this vaccine. You know, how many kids you have with this fully vaccinated with this vaccine, you get a quality incentive. You know, so I took all of that away. I didn't want to no know outside influences. Um, I even decided not to have staff. That's another reason I didn't have a clinical location because I didn't, you know, I, I'm so... <laughs> 
kind of um, overly mindful, a little neurotic about, you know, my branding and, you know, it would have to be someone special that I trusted um, that when they answered the phone, they were going to give the right advice, you know, and that's why the membership, because I didn't want to have to, you know, pay someone. I wanted to use my time to answer the family's questions because I feel like I'm the best one. So you don't have those. a nurse that works with you? Mm-mm, or just an answering me. service? No, just me. So does that mean you ever get a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work it in. I'm going to, luckily, I have some coverage in the city, but, um, but you know what? It works out. I've got so much automated through my electronic medical record, and the app really helps because people can just text me. Um, my daughter's helped me with some of the administrative stuff, so... Yeah, it's a bit family business, but yeah, I just, I, I felt, always felt bad when I hear families say, oh, I called and your front desk staff or your nurse wouldn't go get you. And they told me, you know, right. just to take Miralax for the constipation. And I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> so, um, again, I, I brainstormed all those things that were barriers to me providing the care I wanted to provide. Um, and you remove those barriers. Yeah. That's, and so we have direct access to you, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah. And apparently I need to get the app. <laughs> yes, I will get that too. Well, you've had direct access anyways, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll make it official. <laughs> we'll make it official. So this is a membership fee or membership, a monthly membership, and then yeah. you get unlimited access to your yeah. pediatrician. Like, that's a game changer. I know. It's like a pediatric insurance policy. Like, you always have it there if you need it. Like, um, I I had a mom who who joined on a Friday, and the next day she called me, and she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I joined because, you know, this just happened, and what do I do? And um, so it's, it's, um, you know, and it's, it's better for me because I'm invested in those patients. Like, they're my patients. Um, my husband, I got a call the other night and usually if I got a call, you know, when I'm covering this whole clinic, thousands of patients, I'd be like, oh, like, but now I'm like, oh, which one of my kiddos need me, you know, cause they're mine and I'm invested in it and I know them and I know the family. It's a game changer. I love my job again. Oh, it's, that's great to hear. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because my, my, my gosh, medicine is so stressful. Yeah. But if you, I mean, how much better to go to, to see a doctor who's enjoying their job yeah. versus just going through the motions? Oh, yeah. Just being a robot. Uh, the American healthcare system are really using healthcare workers right now. Uh, just mm-hmm. not even with the pandemic, but I think the pandemic has opened our eyes even more to how much the system uses them and abuses them. Yeah. But um, you're really a pawn in the system. I And when I did those budgets, you know, if I was in network, most of my money would go towards just fueling the system, the insurance companies. Right. Most of my work. Mm-hmm. Instead of 200 patients, 2,000. So 1,800 of those patients were just to feed the system. Oh All that work is just, and once, once you see that, right, you can't unsee it or unknow it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we don't have a doctor shortage in America. We have an inefficiency problem. You know, doctors right. spend about 20, 25% of their time on administrative stuff for insurance companies in the system. Right. That's 170,000 doctors a year. That's yeah. amazing. So that's, you know, America has a real problem. We're using, you know, everything's going up. And, yeah. yeah. We're using so. our resources so incorrectly yes. and inefficient, yes. inefficiently. There you go. Did you know that Radiate Wellness has a subscription-based premium content Facebook group? Think of it like the premium version of this free podcast. In this premium Facebook group, you can find great content like replays of online classes, meditations on angels, chakras, mindfulness, and more, guest speakers, mini classes, polls, plus you'll be the first to know of guests that we have scheduled for the podcast and can submit questions for them. You get all of this great content for one low monthly price and the first month is half off. You can subscribe by going to radiatewellnesscommunity.com slash shop. 
click the subscriptions button and you're in. Also, while I have your attention, wherever you're listening to this free podcast, if you could just do us a couple of favors, please. One is go to hit the subscribe or follow button. Then you'll be notified of all of the episodes we have coming out each week. Also, please rate and review. It sounds really simple, but it helps us to grow our audience when people are looking for great podcasts. And when we grow our audience, we can do bigger and better things and bring you even more great guests. So please do those couple of things, and that will help us grow this audience and this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You know, and so you did mention the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, you started this business like <laughs> during the pandemic. Unfortunately, but fortunately, it's when kids needed it most. That's true. That's true. Yeah, fortunately, yeah, we needed the most. Right, because, you know, so many elective procedures weren't being done. Yeah. So many elective visits or just minor type of visits. It's like, well, I could take you to the doctor, but there's this pandemic. Right. Like I don't well, and I think, to. again, the silver lining is people are opening their eyes to the way we were doing things maybe weren't the right way. You know, hurting kids through a clinic like their cattle, you know, having so many in the waiting room, you know, is not only not good during a pandemic, I don't think it's good any time. Um, and so I think we're starting to see that. Um, and you're exactly right. What bothers me about the system is the system's trying to self, it's trying to self-perpetuate, right? It wants to keep going so it can keep right. funneling money up to the top. You know, that's the whole goal, right? right. Um, and so when the system's not working, what they try to do is to force the people to conform to the system, right? Like, Oh, oh, it's safe to the come to the clinic. You know, oh, kids aren't getting vaccinated. We better make a campaign to get them vaccinated, get them. It's safe to come to the clinic. Come, you know, and I'm not saying it's unsafe. Don't, you know, I don't want right, to, right, right. you know, but, you know, instead of making people try to conform to the system, um, just like with vaccine schedules or just like if they feel unsafe during the pandemic, why don't we change the system to fit what's best <laughs> for the patients, you know, Um so, and we, and we make people feel bad if they don't try to conform to the system. But I always tell people, you know, if, if you're, if you're a black sheep and, and you're not trying to be a white sheep in the herd, um, that's actually a good thing. <laughs> if the system tries to, the white sheep try to make you feel bad, take it as a compliment. Right. Like, you know, you're, you're trying to, to do what, you know, you've seen something more and better and you're trying to do what's best for your family. So... Anyway, so yeah, um, it um, the pandemic is what pushed me. I've wanted to do this for a long time, yeah. <laughs> for a long, long time. Um, and my my spirit has been telling me because, you know, I was I was not in a good place when I was working for the system. Right. You know, I was unwell myself. Oh, um, wow. Things were unbalanced, and I was, and I got I over the winter I got really burnt out during flu season just seeing all the sick kids all day. Um, and, and then when the pandemic started, I was like, I can't, I can't physically. And that's when my soul was just like, you're not going to work. Like I would cry on the way. I mean, my, my spirit was trying to tell me, no, this is not working for us anymore. Yeah. Um, so I, I jumped ship and, and <laughs> we failed. We failed. Um, finally listened to my spirit. And now my spirit's like, Thank you. This is what we've been trying to tell you to do for years. Can you imagine? So, like, was there a model for this model for you? Did you have somebody blazing that trail? Um, kind of. There's some pediatricians throughout the country. It's so there's this movement called direct primary care. Right. Yeah. Um, basically, it's primary care physicians, and there's also also people in specialties starting to do this um, that choose to be out of network with per, with insurance companies, and so the families pay them directly, either per visit or membership fee or both. Or mm -hmm. you know, um, it's usually in a clinic setting. I did choose to go away from that, and there are several pediatricians, usually in big urban centers. I talked to one in Dallas, one in Washington, D.C., one in California um, that does solely home visits, um, not only because it's what's best, you know, for the patients, but, you know, why have it if you don't have to? And 
My whole thing too was, you know, I'm, again, it goes back to that mindful thing, um, aka a little neurotic, but <laughs> if, if I had a clinic, I'd try to replicate their home. I try to use all natural cleaners, you know, I try to, you know, make it as, you know, as welcoming as I could. And why do all that when they have a home? I could just go to their home. So, right, right. And it's, less overhead, less time that you can spend. Less carbon footprint. I mean, right. you know, the well, environment. more time you can spend, but yeah, less yeah. carbon footprint. Yeah, because you you're not, you know, and I think, again, society, I hope we're, again, the silver lining to the pandemic is we're showing, you know, how much inefficiency we had in our country and how much we can simplify, you know. Um, you know, why have all these you know, standing physical locations that people can go into home, you know, if it's possible. And um, finding so much can be virtual. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have a physical location, mm -hmm. right? That um, I think it's waking us up to many, many different things oh, that yeah. we needed to look at. Oh, yeah. Telehealth was kind of taken off anyways because of the convenience part, right. even before the um, pandemic. But now, I mean, I've realized as a physician how far I can go, you know, how much I can do over a video. And I can do a lot. You know, with a sprained ankle, I can watch them walk. They can point where it hurts. I can see what the swelling is, you know. Yeah. I mean, there are times when I need to be there in person, but um, I can do so much. You know, yesterday I did a swimmer's ear. I mean, it was quite obvious, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, you know, most of it I can handle in that membership and save them hundreds of dollars in urgent care visits. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Well, well, and a family going to urgent care. That's a whole day proposition sometimes. Yes. And exposure and right. and not well and inconvenient and um, you know, and why did all the urgent cares pop up? Because people couldn't get a hold of their doctor. Um, because their doctor is too busy being a robot for the system, too busy churning out the what we call RVUs, relative yeah. that's so that's a medical term for, you know, each visit is so many RVUs like Relative. Uh, I think it's value unit. Um, oh, my. Yeah. So just being, I call it an RVU robot, like just yeah. churning out, you know, for the system. Um, and so when people can't get a hold of their doctor, right, they have to do these other things, either, yeah. you know, just stick it out at home until, you know, or, or just. So, you know, I think, I think patients are frustrated. They are. Mm -hmm. And doctors are obviously frustrated. <laughs> and yeah. Nurses are frustrated. That Everyone's just frustrated with the healthcare system. Well, I don't know if you listened to this episode, but I had uh, Lisa Adams, who's a nurse, and yeah. she's she was on the podcast, and she wrote a book called America's Real Healthcare Problem, and it was burnout. Yeah, oh. Medical burnout. That Ooh. you're not getting the best no. of your medical team. No. Mm -mm. Because they're burned out. No. And Very real problem. It is, again, America likes to push things until it's really bad and then they turn yeah. things around. But, um, but, yeah, you know, you have these wonderful resources like me. I mean, if it wasn't for me opening my own business, I wouldn't be in medicine. And that's a real shame. I mean, think about how many people. Oh, and Joy Wider. I mean, if she was done before her time, um, and she's doing other things right now, like mentoring me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but um, you know, think about all, everyone else she could have helped if the system hadn't used her and abused her, you know. So you're exactly right. America's I love how you termed it, that America's not using its resources very well. <laughs> no, we're not. And you're right. We get to this kind of this critical point and then, like, well, something has to change. And so change everything, yeah. right, rather than just watch what's boiling under the surface and make tweaks accordingly. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you've got this model where it's membership-based. We get access to a real doctor. Yeah, yeah, on the line. A real doctor. And by text, by video, by call, by phone, that who understands. My, I know your family. Right? The mm -hmm. whole family. Understands the family's um, needs for, you know, adhering or not adhering to a vaccine schedule, right? Um, you've got the nutrition chops, too. 
Yeah. Oh, I love that's my bread and butter. It's it's so funny how you know I did. I see what you did there. Uh, yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does have humor. <laughs> like, usually, it's my husband who chimes in. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, uh, you know, I started out in undergrad. I got a degree in dietetics, thinking I wanted to be a dietitian. Oh, um, okay. And then I had an anatomy professor that was like, you should you should apply for med school. You'd be a shoe in. So I did, got in, which was great. And, you know, I spent all this time, I mean, four years of medical school. Right. I did four years. I thought I wanted to be a surgeon <laughs> for four oh, years, okay. uh, thinking I wanted to be a pediatric surgeon because I thought, whoa, I can really save kids' lives by doing this. Like, this is how I'm going to save kids' lives. Um, but then I started seeing the obesity epidemic and how unwell kids were. We had wound infections in kids, which is usually an old person thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then I was like, wait, <laughs> kids really need my nutrition, you know, really need yeah. this primary care, this wellness approach. So um, went to peds. So, you know, gosh, I did, you know, what, 10, 10 to 12 years of medical training, Right. right? Right. But do you know what I use most of? Really? <laughs> the undergraduate degree, nutrition degree, because that's where families in America need my help the most. See? They don't know what to do or what to do or how to do it. or It's because, you know, we've been just inundated with all this false advertisement and, you know, what healthy is and what is not healthy eating and, well, you know. What sells? What can we market? Exactly. What produce so that people buy more, right? And yeah. so um, we've also had uh, Donna Kelly on the podcast a couple awesome. of times, pharmacist, yeah, who healed her chronic leg pain, like she was to the point where she felt she was never going to walk again. Healed that with food by just changing her diet. Isn't that incredible. And now she kept her pharmacy degree, but doesn't practice that anymore and now practices nutrition. Well, not, it's like functional sure. degree mm-hmm. of nutrition, but, um, I think there's, I think you're onto something. Oh, it makes, I mean, you are what you eat, right? right? right. And Hippocrates, I mean, let food be thy medicine. I mean, why again, it's only been the last 50 years that we've really gotten away from all that, right. you know, and we need to go back to what we were doing for centuries that worked for the human race. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you know, it worked for centuries, you know, eating whole food. Yes, it worked for centuries. And in the last 50 years, we've just been told, no, you know, you need to do what the companies make money from. Um, and that's why we've gotten away from all that. And we need to get back to all that and get back to that way of living. Um and so, yeah, it's, you know, a lot of my, you know, my journey has been, you know, again, you, you, you learn as you go along and your experiences mold you. One of my busy, biggest experiences was I had a family relative who had psoriasis, um, had gone to specialist after specialist and, you know, and, and creams and medications and finally was on this medication that's so toxic they had to test kidney function. Oh dear. Yeah. For, you know, and anyways, and I started talking to Joy Weidert and my friend Anna Esparham, who's also in integrative medicine. Um, and we started, you know, cleaning the diet, cleaning the environment, you know, getting clean, cleaning supplies, you know, without toxic chemicals and bath and body. Oh, you wouldn't imagine what people put on their body. Oh my gosh. Like that's bad for us. So, um, anyway, so cleaning up those things and putting on some supplements, um, not only got off the medication, but you know, is totally, I mean, hasn't used anything in years. So, you know, that psoriasis, that's when I started, that's when it light bulb, you know, the psoriasis was not a disease where we need to treat with medication. It was the body telling us something's not right. Um, exactly. That's when, you know, I, my mindset totally shifted really. Um, yeah. And that's when it became really hard to work in a clinic because yes. that's when, you know, once you see something like that, you can't go back. Um, and that's when it was really difficult for me because, you know, I'd see the eczema. Right. And all I would have time for is here's your steroid cream. Right. Whereas I knew, oh my gosh, it's probably a dairy intolerance or a magnesium deficiency. You know, right. now that I'd seen that, I knew there, there, you know, 
You had to be something that. underlying. Yeah. Okay. So as a mom, and I'm, you're a pediatrician, you're a mom, you're a nutritionist, right? So getting kids to eat well. Yeah. Sometimes they won't even eat. So do you, what do you do with parents whose kids just won't eat? Yeah. Well, my whole goal in, in, is to start off with them in infancy, right? To right. start setting up those healthy, you know, because my daughter, like, you know, I had never had a lot of processed foods in her diet. We, we I always made it a point, fruit or vegetable at every meal and snack. So now, like, it's weird for her to, like, have a snack without fruit or vegetable. Like, you know, it's so ingrained in her. Um, and, like, plain stuff tastes good to her because that's what she's used to. She's not used to the you know, pop tarts or the overly processed, super sugary stuff. Like to her, that stuff tastes weird. So it really does, you know, you need to start training their palate from the get-go. But that doesn't mean if they're older, we can't gradually change their palate. It's it's a process and it's step-by-step, step, pick your battles. Um, the big thing I tell parents is, again, it's individualized, just like with the vaccine schedule. Yeah. We, we pick out, I, I listen to what they're doing right now. And I pick out the big things that concern me, such as sugary beverages or soda. Like, that's the first thing, the battle I pick, you know. And right. once we've got that habit down, it's, you know, it's changing habits. It's, okay, next we want to work on changing that Pop-Tart to some oatmeal or, you know. Yeah. So gradually, but, you know, it's really shifting that palate from those super you know, um, processed foods with those supernatural amounts of sugar and salt and fat and all that stuff. Right. Um, changing that palate to actually enjoy regular food. like Real food. Yes, like oatmeal and fruits and vegetables and nuts. Yeah. Well, I know the previous p- pediatrician we've been seeing, um, you know, my daughter was gaining a little bit of weight and the doctor said, oh, well, you need to cut out the sugary drinks. My daughter and I looked at each other and she she does she never yeah. drinks sugary drinks ever. Right. But that was the only thing that the doctor they knew. Was, yeah, yeah. that's the only thing they knew. Again, because none of this I learned in med school, right? Like, so, and oh, th- that's such a disservice. I mean, so what's the number one problem in America? It's obesity, right? Really? Overweight and obesity, and and we are uh, the people that we're supposed to be going to that for physicians and are not trained in. And nutrition and wellness and what's healthy and and so it's so unfortunate again in America, but I, you know I don't want to get into conspiracy stuff because but oh, heck. Go, ahead. go ahead and just do it. But this is the audience, you know, <laughs> do it. But um, you know the pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money off of of they diabetes do. medications um, and. You know, and so I worry that there's some kind of connection there oh. <laughs> that, you know, the reason why the, the, the medical community is not taught about preventative care or wellness or um, nutrition is because it doesn't make money. Like keeping people well doesn't, you know, exactly. make those companies money. So yeah, they make more um, money if you're sick exactly. than if you're not. You just hit the nail on the head about why. I mean, there's so many things wrong with the, about the American healthcare system, right. but it makes more money if you're more sick. Exactly. Like, there so really they should be an incentive. It's not how many diabetes patients do you see. It's like how many people do you keep off of right. diabetes? Totally. Right. right? Yeah. That should be the. the but it's not. It's geared towards you know this whole system is geared towards reimbursing for disease and and. And sickness. So, and that's again going back to that movement of of physicians and and providers and patients to this direct primary care model. You know, you know, it behooves me to keep you well. <laughs> I get less calls. I mean, not that I don't mind calls. I don't mind calls, but you know, it behooves me to keep you well because I'm invested in it. You, yeah. <laughs> like literally. Yeah. Right. So you do better when people are well. I do. Like that's my whole goal. Like instead of with the insurance company models, you know, it just it's so it's you know, I could go on about the healthcare system, but you know what families need to do um one, they need to look into options. There are more options now than the than the typical healthcare system and make make it a priority, you know. 
health is an investment. It shouldn't be a cost. Like, oh, this cost me this much. Which, you know, I know there's some families that, you know, it's they're having a tough time, but you know, it really is an investment, you know. Make some you know, our our family doesn't, you know, have seasoned chief tickets or whatever. Not that right. that's a bad thing, but you know what I mean. You we don't we have vacation homes that you gotta pay off. Right. We have a, a big investment in our grocery bill, which is Yeah. You know, or you know That's like Michael Moore's film Sicko. He went to totally. interview uh, doctors in France and he said, Well, what what is your biggest um, bill? They said uh, fruits and vegetables. Why? Yeah. Right? You know. Um, so if you, yeah, if you don't invest in your wellness, you're going to invest in your sickness. Totally down the road. And then that's the whole thing, too, is right. we, we don't pay for it now, you know. And so in America, the preventative visits are quick. They're cheap, you know, and, exactly. and, you know, and, but then down the road, like you said, <laughs> when they end up getting whatever mental or physical um, things that Americans are getting, that's when you end up paying for it because exactly. we know insurance companies are for profit. So they're going to figure out some way to put the cost either on the doctor or the, or the patient with and deductibles and co-pays. I think that's why Obamacare is getting such a bad rap among so many circles is because it does have, I mean, not perfect, but does have well visits that are covered. You know, you, you preventative things are covered. Yeah. Right? And that's and what people need. can't have that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that in the insurance system. It's, 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 anyways, what, what families can do is, is one, be mindful that there's, there's, you know, and I loved your podcast with, um, was it Lynn on mindfulness? Yeah, Lynn Rossi. Yeah, because I always, everyone's like, what's mindfulness mean? I'm like, well, it's thinking about things and about the repercussions of your decisions. But right. she says it's a conscious, you know, it's it's an effort. It's a conscious effort. Um, you know, and the opposite of it is being mindless, right? Not exactly. thinking, which I think is a whole big problem in our country is not taking the time to think about the repercussions and just going along with the flow. Absolutely. And not thinking about things. Right. And so um, if somebody wanted to get into this membership program, we would go to mindfulpediatricscasey.com. Yeah. We have listeners around the world. Um, how far can you practice yeah, Here, that's a great. Kansas and Missouri, I think. Yep, yep. So I'm trying to. So, you know, people have asked me if I would just do a virtual visit. And, you know, my whole goal is, again, to be be a kid's pediatrician through their life. So yeah. right now I'm really trying to stick with the model of, of being their whole pediatrician, virtual and home visit for their checkups. So um, about 30 minutes from my home in Southern Johnson County. So um, pretty much all the Casey Metro area and a little bit on the Missouri side east. So yeah. Is there a, a, a board or um, some sort of organization where people can find holistic um, like direct care pediatricians in their area. Oh, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I, so I guess not. I'm, I'm finding out that, uh, you know, there's this like underground <laughs> kind of, you know, wellness community, which is amazing, but you're exactly right. Um, how do we, you know, how do we, you know, oh, this provider, you know, is accepting of this or has been trained in this. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot of word of mouth, amongst moms and there's some Facebook groups, um, that kind of, you know, um, there's one kind of crunchy. I love it. I get, I get tips from there. I love Um, that group. Yes. Kind of crunchy on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, A lot of holistic, uh, natural remedies and recommendations. Yeah. So that's a place to network. Um, but yeah, um, on my website, I mean, feel free. There's a contact form, my email, my phone number. If anyone wants to run something by me or see right. if I if I know anyone in their area, um, and that phone please number do. is 913-214-2143. Yeah, yeah. Mindfulpediatricskc.com. And then you've got a blog. Yeah. And I just wrote one speaking about me what? talking too much about the healthcare system. I just wrote one about my journey and... I, I call it the return to the doctor, my return to the doctor patient relationship mm-hmm. talks about the, how the health system restricted me from practicing the way I wanted to. So it's an interesting little one. Um, but yeah, I have some nutrition stuff on there. Um, it's a platform for me 
to spread that information. It used to be a way to me for me to communicate to my patients when I only had 10 minutes with them, right? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, go read my blog because I don't have time to tell you everything. I know. That's sad. I know, it is sad. And then we can find you on Facebook. Yeah. At Dr. Carissa Stanton. Yeah. And then Instagram at, I love Instagram. I know nothing about how to really, you know, do I know, it, I need to get I'm better. Like, My 16 like year old daughter's helping me. Oh, good. <laughs> I like the pretty pictures. You're on Instagram at Mindful Pediatrics KC. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm trying now, to put you little do, tips on there. Oh, there are. Like, I try to, yeah. Excellent. Now, I see on your card, though, that you do have, there is a location with a suite number. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, that is a virtual office. Um, I can receive shipments in there. Um, so because I, um, I obviously need some like medical supplies, right. a lot of times they'll only ship where my medical license is, the addresses and I don't want that public, so <laughs> my own, because my actual office, right, is in my basement. Oh. <laughs> so, um. So you do have a kind of a, a, a just space. a business, business yeah. location, right? Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense for storage. Um, this has been so informative and so helpful, and I, I really hope parents out there are going to listen to this episode and um, just understand how a direct care physician can help their family. Oh, it helps in so many ways that you don't even, like, I'm still learning. I mean, I've been doing this for, you know, a couple months now, and I'm still like, oh my gosh, I can push the envelope because if right. something hit, they can call me. Like, you know, I don't have to like be like wondering if they're floating out there, you know, so it's, it's opened so many doors and it, it sheds light onto why the care was not, I didn't like it before that because the care this is the way it should be, right? The yes. way it was for centuries. So, so yeah, and, um, and empower families. I think that's what I want to do, empower them to listen to their guts, that listen to their, like, ooh, this isn't right. Like, something's not right here. I have so many families that are coming to me now, and they're like, gosh, I wish I, you know, would have listened to my gut sooner because, you know, I did this, and I knew it wasn't right, but you know, so-and-so said it was, you know, what we had to do. And so, um, yeah, empowering families to, to listen to your gut, to get the information for themselves, right. look for different options, invest in wellness. because It's so important for their children. And that's why I did pediatrics and not adult medicine, because um, not just because they're cuter, but, yeah. but because what I do now can have so much effect on their whole rest of their life. You know, this is true, and, and it can make parent, such big effect. Yes, and what parent would not want the very best for their kids? Their yeah. Parents are so protective of their kids, and, and it's a good way to start them off right. Yeah, that that's my goal is to, you know, if we invest now, we could set up for the whole rest of their lives a life of wellness. Absolutely. How wonderful would that be? Well, Dr. Chris <laughs> Stanton, thank you so much for joining me here today. Mindful Pediatrics, KC. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area, dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.